better tell you before you get close. I'm a special case. I'm not like you. supper. Nice little sheep's head there, boys. <laughs> Good eating right there. Heck yeah, nice size. Beautiful shot. And Jones is happy. Say hello. Say hello, Jones. The Florida boys do it. <laughs> wow! That is. I was like, I had to look three times at him. I said, "Is that a sheep's head?" I need to make real good sure because that is a big old fish. Mr. Jones always has to greet the fish. Greet the fish. Watch how he greets the fish. <laughs> You guys may have guessed what we're out here doing. We're out here bow fishing. Told the, the qualified captain I'd take some of his gear out here and do some cool stuff. Give him a little bit of a, give him a show and rep his gear. He sent me some gear and we're out here showing you how we do it down in Florida, how the Florida boys do it. I spent $30 on this bow. I got it at a yard sale in North Carolina. It's an old deer hunting bow from the 90s, okay? You don't need a fancy bow. You can get you any kind of a bow fishing rig. This is a Cajun. I used to use PSE before this, a bow fishing setup, and just put it on any old bow, any old cheap bow, because you're just going to be out here beating it up. This is a Cajun archery. I'm getting used to it. The first time I've actually actually got here and shot fish with it, but I like it. It's good, so I would recommend Cajun, Cajun as well. Uh, I got this belt, Core Essentials. Holds up my pants. Doesn't, can't ask a whole lot more from a belt, but it's a nice belt. I like it. It's got like micro adjustments. Real cool. Check them out. Core Essentials. Bone Tactical 10 will get you 10% off of their website. Um, EDC Relentless. BoneTactical.com. Central little knife. I can, I can slip this in here. Make this hole a little bigger. Okay. And then I can real easily take this fish off. And one of the reasons that I mentioned that, screw that on with Loctite so it won't get turned around. It's a little tip for salt water. Because I would have lost this fish if, if, if that, that broadhead would have come loose. All right, the, the tip would have come loose. This would have spun around if I hadn't Loctited it and I would have lost this big old fish. All right, now that's a big old sheep's head. There, buddy. Hey guys, we're checking in with LT. Chef LT decided to join us for the cook and prep of these pretty awesome sheep's head here. She happened to, you may recognize her from the 
Europe videos that are here on the channel. She flew in uh, from Italy to help us make these. Do a catch and cook. To help us do a catch and cook. What do you got there in the bag, LT? Well, Mr. Bone has gone out, which you guys will see in the beginning of the video. And well, what do you call it? Your bow? Your, your arrow? Arrowed some. Shoot. Shot you can some, say shoot. <laughs> shot some sheep's head. This is some sheepies. Massive. This is, this is a big sheep's head here. Good size. For eating any bigger than this and you probably don't want to eat it this is probably the perfect size smaller than this is still a good size to eat but any bigger than this you run into problems with worms and stuff like that but our fillet table is broken right now so it's going to be a little difficult because we want to make sure this fish and its fillets don't fly off the table and we want to show you guys that you can use the ghost knife for anything and everything. So instead of using my favorite fillet knife for this fish, I'm gonna use a ghost knife. Um, and we're gonna see how that goes. It's very short, so it's gonna be a little difficult. Also, pre-warning, this is not a how-to fillet a fish. Go watch a different YouTube video if you wanna do that. This is not a how-to fillet a fish. This will be a how-to cook an excellent. Yes. yes, I was never taught how to fillet a fish. I've been filleting fish for years, but I don't do it right, and I know that. So no trolling the fillet. Also, this is not a fillet knife. This is the $30 knife that's on our website that is impervious to all elements, will not rust, will not have no damage from the salt water, so you can wear it all day long. You can be in and out of the salt with it, and you can fillet a fish with it like we're about to see. The NPE Ghost Knife is designed for non-permissive environments. Go ahead and start filleting, that's fine. And very tough, very scaly fish. When they're this size, they're pretty, they're pretty tough, pretty scaly fish. And with a longer fillet knife, like she said, it's gonna be a lot easier, but we do wanna show you guys that it is possible, if you have to, with the Ghost Knife. So it looks like she's cutting along the top there, basically right along the top. That's where the meaty part is. And it doesn't get any fresher than this, by the way, guys. This the fish is freshly shot. Fresh meat pulling right off of there. Some guys like to freeze their meat. I don't like to freeze it. If I if I if I have time, if I can shoot it and bring it back to the house here in a few minutes, in an hour or so, then it's fresh meat, never frozen, doesn't get any fresher. So I'll probably show you guys here how she does the fillet on one side. Like, like you can see, she's filleting now. I'll show. We'll probably just do the one side, remove the actual fillet. If you want to think of it in terms of the good meat, there's basically a, a slab right there of good meat on each side of the of the fish. She's cutting through, making sure not to puncture the guts of the fish, and she's just gonna. What she's basically gonna do is surgically remove that slab of good meat that is just here. On the side of the fish you kind of cut down in a in a pattern down there and and it all depends on what you like there's a lot more of the fish that's actually edible so if you're in a survival situation or if you're yeah, this you can eat all the jaw here if you would like to this meat it's actually really good meat it's just very difficult to get good pieces of even i could have gone up farther here there's still meat here but this actually might be my first time going a sheep's head so just kind of a learning process. We don't generally target sheep's head with a rod and reel and we and LT does mostly rod and reel fishing. So a lot of times we don't generally target this species. You can target them. You can target them anywhere there's barnacles. They love barnacles. You can chum them up with knocking some barnacles off of some dock pilings. But 
we generally target what you would consider to be more game fish species. You cannot shoot, fun fact, you can't shoot in Florida any game fish. So this is the most desirable fish that you are legally able to shoot. So if you, if you really, if you get in here and look, that's the slab of meat right there. So down here is the backbone, okay? And she is separating away the best meat of the fish. And also, as you can see, that she said this part was good too. We just don't take it off because it's, it's a smaller amount of meat. And we're kind of... And as you can see, there's still, there's meat here that I missed. There's meat kind of in here. This is the rib bones right here. So you want to avoid that. There's some meat here. There's going to be meat up here. Not really here, but up here. I could have gone in farther with the filet. I might do that on the other side of the fish. We also have two fish, but this is this is the biggest one. And um, so here you can see it looks a little bloody because I cut into the bloodline and the fish was still alive when I was filleting it. So that blood was still pumping. We're just going to give this a quick little rinse. See, I want to show you guys what is in here. And like I said, this is poor, poor filet, like filetmanship. So also, I think it's a great job considering the size of the blade. Yeah. Very small blade, concealable, able to be worn around your neck at all times while you're fishing, while you're while you're doing all this stuff. I well, what I had on me this whole time was the. I mean, this is really good. I mean, it's cutting. It's cutting much, it's cutting just as good as, you know, my, a good, um... A good filet knife would. The difference is a filet knife is a flexible blade. This is ceramic, so the blade itself is not flexible. This is no, this is no less sharp. The ghost knife is no less sharp. It's just not quite as flexible and not as long. The biggest difference is the length of the blade. This is just not anything we can do anything with. So your filets, when you cut a fish, are going to look kind of like this. It's going to have a little... It's not going to be a perfect line like that so get rid of that feed the the dock fishes and you want to just double check that you cut in the right spots so this is perfect there's no bones in this piece here nothing over here this is actually a really good fillet so this right here is actually from where greg shot this one um this is kind of where the arrow went through and actually that's kind of nice for me because i can use that as the start to skinning the fish. So when I like to skin the fish, I try to just grab, it's nice because I have nails right now and I can grab the skin. And what she means by skinning it, she, so she just cut the meat off, but there's still all of the scales that are on the other side of this fish here. All of those scales are still on the other side of this filet. So now she's gonna go through and cut along the other side so it's just only meat that she has there. Which is difficult with this smaller knife, but it's still getting the job done. I'm gonna try to do a little bit at a time. But this, I mean, this knife's doing a really, really great job of just super easily peeling the skin. And it, it's not something that's easy to do. You have to be very precise here because if you cut too far into the filet, you lose meat. Yet, if you cut too far towards the scales of the fish, then you'll you'll cut a hole in the in the actual skin or the scales and you will mess up what you've got going on there. So it's just really I like to use the corner of the fillet table to kind of set the fish up on and just use that corner to kind of guide my knife like this. And As she this said point, she's skinning just like she's just like she would skin an animal. And since I'm going to be using this fish, I'm gonna fry it today. I don't need big fillets. I'm not gonna be making it need doesn't need to look nice. That's still a nice piece of fish if you want to bake that or grill that. But I'm just splitting it up because this little this smaller knife will be easier to use if I split up the fish a bit. And with a big fillet knife, it's much easier. See, I missed a lot of meat right there because it's the knife is not as wide as I'd like it to be. And don't be afraid to press down on the skin. Again, we're just trying to show the capabilities of the NPE Ghost Knife. The NPE Ghost Knife is not designed for this, but we want to show that it is very capable of cutting flesh should it be called to do that. It is non-metallic, okay? So you can walk through a metal detector with it. I, I do have to always ask you guys, please don't 
send me emails or messages saying that you brought these on planes or anything like that, that you did anything so this illegal is with actually them. pretty nice by, I mean, there's some meat here we missed. That's just because of the width of the knife, but I mean, it did get very nice and close. There's no meat right there. Feed that to the fishes. And I'd like to sh point out that this, this is the bloodline of the fish right here. And that some people will cook this whole piece. And I personally don't like fishy tasting fish. So I'm gonna go ahead, cause that's where the fishy taste kind of comes from. If you don't like a piece of fish that someone cooked, a lot of the times it's because that bloodline's in there. So this bloodline, sometimes you can cut, you know. So just, that's the fishy taste? That's where the fishy taste comes from the blood? The bloodline I think is, is if you cook this piece, this piece would be very fishy. Interesting. So I like to cut it out of my fish. And so that's nothing you need, but people do, some people, don't mind it and we'll and we'll still use it. So this piece is still a fine piece, but I just like to cut all the, you know, trimming some of this off that was nearest the skin, cut that off. Any of the blood on the fish will really help your fish taste better. And I mean, we're going for taste right now. You know, if you're, if you're surviving, you're not. So you wanna get the most of the fish you can Again, we're throwing away a lot of edible meat. Not a lot of edible meat, but definitely edible meat. And we're just taking the very choice parts that we like to eat out of this fish. And I want to really stress that we don't promote ever, ever, ever killing any kind of an animal, whether it's a fish or anything, and not eating it. So that's why we are showing you through this whole process. I shot this fish, and now we're going to show the cleaning, and then in a minute we're gonna cook it, and we will obviously finish with eating everything we kill here at Bone Tactical. So I'm gonna do this with the other side of the fish, same thing, but this is what we're gonna be eating tonight. This is just one side of the fish. So that's a, this is a good chunk of meat for a sheep's head. Um, this, is, this is a serving size for two people, so that's just half the fish. Fish is, so, you know. So we've got another fish to go. All right, guys, we'll probably catch up with you on the actual cooking and preparation in the kitchen here in a minute. So now we're inside and the fish has been soaking in, um, all I had was creamer, like heavy cream, for about an hour. Um, and what this does is it just kind of, it'll, sheep's head is a little bit of a fishy fish, if you would say. Um, and it just kind of will release some of the fishiness in the fish into the milk um, and just makes it a little more tender, which is something I like to do when I'm frying fish. So you always want to start with dry fish, um, any meat you're ever cooking, beef, pork, anything. You want it to be dry before you season it, before you bread it, um, before you start working with it. Now you can use um, water, you can use milk. I like to use egg before I, to dip my fish in before I bread it. And I've never used this before. I really like to use um, the Everglades seasoning version of the fish batter, or it's just a fry batter, really, really good. I couldn't find it, so I just grabbed this. I've never used it. I'm really interested to see what it's like. Um, I forgot, I was gonna do this before. But um, it's just kind of a basic fish fry. I like to add my own seasoning into these boxed ones. Um, I like to add some cayenne, some paprika, just some stuff to get it a little, give it a little spice and a little more flavor. Okay, and then just give that a quick mix. So the batter's ready. Um, I'm gonna use the egg now. Um, three eggs for this much fish is kind of an overkill. You could just use two. But. Okay, fish is dry. Now I'm going to prep the fish. I like to just dip it. I, I'll probably just dump this whole thing on here, coat it around in egg, dump or shake it off a little bit, put it in here and just toss it 
just the easiest way. You can do it individually if you'd like, but it takes a lot of time. It's not worth it. So um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. that it's very important that you cut I'm doing like fish bites with this and I cut them into uniform pieces um, if there are different shapes and sizes they're gonna cook differently and it's gonna be really hard to get them to cook all the same so you want to make sure that they're the same size and like I said this is overkill with the egg even overkill with the batter um, so you could use probably half the amount of batter which I use the whole box could use half the box for this amount of fish. And then I'm gonna come over here, set this back here. And very important too, you wanna make sure your oil is at the right temperature or else you will burn the fish. You want it to be around 350, 375. And we're gonna be around 350, 375 which is perfect. It's very important that you, I like to use a cast iron pan, but you want to let your pan preheat for probably 15 minutes with the oil in it before you start frying your fish so that it stays at the same temperature. It's not fluctuating, cooking the fish differently. Okay, so I have my plate here ready with paper towel on it to catch the excess drippings once I'm done. And I'm gonna start placing the fish in. You wanna make sure you don't overcrowd the pan um, that's it. So this pan's full enough. Um, it, this fish is probably going to take, um, three minutes on each side, if that, to cook all the way through. Um, I just kind of go by color sometimes. You just want it to be a nice golden brown color. Um, and I'll always break one open just to double check, be sure. You can always use your thermometer. You want your fish to be around 145 degrees. That'll be cooked. Um, but with fish, you should be okay. It's fresh. We didn't see any problems with it. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit. And if it's not all the way cooked, it's sushi. Right. And it's fresh, so, you know. Um, I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit. I'm gonna get a lemon ready, because the only thing you need to go with this is a nice lemon to squeeze over the fish once it's done. Um, not making any sides today. We're just gonna do this for the catch and cook. Um, I think that's about it. I'm gonna slice up this lemon, get some plates ready, and let that sit for a little bit. So I always save part of the bloodline that you guys saw me cut out earlier for Jones. I don't bread it or anything. So this is actually a really good example. I have this little piece of the bloodline cooking for Jones in here. And if you look at it, when it cooks, it has this, I can get it, this dark. Sit. The fish has this dark line in it. If you get it, if your fish looks, it's gonna look like this once it's cooked, it has the white still, then it is going to, that's just the bloodline. If you see Mr. Jones here is sporting his qualified captain buff, and he's behaving right now because he knows he's gonna get something. Sit. Lay down. Stay. Look at me. Stay. 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 You have to let your food cool down, Jones. You've got to let it cool down, Jones. Stay. 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 What do you think? Do you think it's cool enough? Yeah. Okay, get it. How is it? How is it? I already saw it. It's gone. <laughs> You just broke one open? Mm-hmm. How's it look? 
Amazing. Is it too hot to eat? Yes. All right, so this is what it looks like. I think we're done here. And I will show you guys eating it here in a second as soon as it cools down. We'll give you our opinion on how it tastes. Put a little lemon on there. Sheep's head. I think it's our first time each trying the sheep's head. Yeah, first time. Cheers. We don't. Cheers. We don't fish for sheep's head. Like we said, it's a. It's a great. It's probably the top eating fish for bow fishing, but uh, it's it's not something that we regularly target because the type of fishing that we like to do. Jones is going crazy over here trying to get a piece now, but uh, but it's uh, it's a, it's a lot more fun to target with the bow. But let's try it. All right. Oh wow. Mm. So good. It's amazing. The milk really helps draw out the fishiness. It's not fishy at all. There's no fishy taste. I, I, like, I'm not a big fish eater. and tastes like snapper. It's just a clean, it's like chicken fingers, but they fall apart. It's like much lighter and thinner and yeah. obviously healthier. It's a beautiful white fish. Beautiful, beautiful white fish. So, give it a shot, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you want to see more shooting cooks or catching cooks in the future from Bone Tactical and Bone Outdoors. If you guys are not following Bone Outdoors, make sure you follow Bone Outdoors because this is where the majority of this these type videos is going to live from now on. Okay, I'm getting Bone Tactical YouTube is going to be doing more of the tactical stuff here in the future. And Bone Outdoors is going to be doing a lot more of the outdoor stuff. So if you like this kind of video, make sure you follow Bone Outdoors. Head over and give me a follow over on the other channel. It's another YouTube channel called Bone Outdoors. Thank you. Thanks for watching. To help support the channel, follow these channels, share these videos with your friends, comment, get involved. That's how we can afford to keep these videos coming. You know, we, we take our, our time and the camera gear is expensive and all this stuff, you know, doing this. So LT is extremely expensive to work with. So thank you. Uh, thank you for watching Bone Outdoors.